The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Sebastian didn't quite know how long it had been since the last expandable was last sent down into the depths of the black site. But he was starting to think, perhaps, this had been it. There was no way Urban Shade was running out of prisoners. Just like the budget, the amount of death row inmates at their disposal seemed to be endless. Though considering what Urban Shade was doing, he could understand the amount of cash on hand they had. Perhaps he should bounce. He could breathe underwater, after all. Considering the state of his body. The saboteur sat in one of the Black Side's cafeterias, stretched out to his full length on one of the tables, playing with what Urban Shade had dubbed an eat ball. It was just a round nutrient bar that had no expiration date due to all the crap they put in it. Eat balls, while looking like grey balls of minced meat, actually were quite sticky and chewy and tasted like ramen with a very synthetic aftertaste. Sebastian had been eating these for a while now. There were just so many of these in various lockers and storages on the black side that he could probably live just of these for ten years. He inspected the ball that could barely be classified as food. You are throwing it into his mouth and chewing. But just as he swallowed, his thin shaped ears twitched. It was barely audible, but it was unmistakable. A sound. Thank God he swallowed the ball in time, otherwise, his own chewing would have made him overhear it. With a quickly beating heart, he approached the noise. If he was hearing it, the other monsters in the facility did. And that was good and bad at the same time. It was the noise of a weapon. The unmistakable sound of a Heckline Koch UMP. A standard issue weapon for Urban Shape NTF units. How... How was this possible? There was zero chance a security guard or MTF survived until this point. You would have definitely noticed their presence. And hell, if someone did survive this long, they would definitely not just start gunning up the place now. When expendables weren't given weapons, well, sometimes. When they were sent into anomalous zones, they were occasionally given handguns for self-defense. And Sebastian vaguely recalled that a revolver with one bullet was given to any expendable sent into A-440, codename Bone Orchard. Though he could never figure out why. All documents he found of that place were so heavily redacted. On one of the documents, a scientist had written, How the fuck am I supposed to work with this? Over it, with red letters. Either way... MTFs, or mobile task forces, could mean trouble or salvation. The saboteur quickly slipped into a security office that still had electricity. Over the weeks, more and more systems had been breaking down, undoubtedly because of neglect and the other monsters in the facility. Quickly, Sebastian cycled through the security cameras. Yes, he could see it. A submarine was in the docks. Hmm, it's big. Big enough to fit him. He grinned. If he could make it past the MDF team, he could escape easy peasy lemon squeezy. Though, he switched through the channels. And he was surprised. <laughs> it was actually kind of funny. MDFs usually stuck together like glued together bugs. But this team was scattered. He counted five members in total. Three of them were running for their lives. Two were shooting, like they were in a Rambo movie. Sebastian tapped his chin in thought. There were a handful of anomalies in the black side that could cause this, even on hardened MTF units. 
Oh well. Poor buggers. Anyways, the closest one was one of the Rambos. Perhaps assisting them would cause something interesting to happen. Snickering to himself, Sebastian left the security office. Slithering his way into what used to be a laboratory for microbiological studies. The entire place was shot to pieces. When Sebastian peeked into the lab, he understood why. The floor was covered in dead J-69-1 instances. J-69-1, codename Matchmaking Snail, were members of a species of semi-humanoid slugs. They had a wolf pack mentality, the alphas usually being identifiable by being the only members in the pack with a shell on their back. They looked like hunched over humans with thick arms and legs, though they weren't that physically strong. They were black with a greenish tint in color and fed mostly on cave moss they cultivated where they had been initially discovered. Though they were highly aggressive, despite being vegetarians. Urban Shade captured as many specimens as possible as they considered them an endangered animal species. And you, one of the lost MTF members, were gunning them down like they were nothing but zombies. The monsters had surprised you. Despite being about five feet tall when hunched over, their dark bodies, as well as large numbers and slow movements, made them tricky to deal with when unprepared. They bred quickly, after all. Sebastian watched as you gunned one of the last two down, but it appeared like you missed the last one. It had been approaching you from behind, slowly, carefully. Should Sebastian help you? Nah, he was curious what you'd do and what would happen next. If it looked like you were about to die, he'd swoop in. Would make it easier to make his friendly intentions clear. You know, saving you. <laughs> ah, patiently you watched as the snail grabbed you from behind. You screamed in fear, but physically pushed against the thing. Though it was almost useless. Its flesh was incredibly soft and flabby, not to mention covered in a thin layer of oil-like secretions. Not quite slime. Sebastian read in an addendum that the oil was actually quite good for a person's hair. The snail was wrestling with you, and for a moment it looked like Sebastian did have to swoop in, when the fight went to the ground. But after about a minute or two, you stood up. Oh, thought Sebastian as he looked at your helmet and your lower jaw. The only thing that had been visible to him this entire time. You coughed, feeling like you were unable to breathe. But since nothing was moving in the lab anymore, you decided to go against protocol. With a swift click of your helmet, it was undone and you placed it on the tables. Sebastian's eyes widened. Uh, thank God you were a chick, otherwise this would be the most awkward interaction he was about to have. You were breathing heavily. As you tried wiping the black sludge off your face, the snail had vomited into your mouth after wrestling you to the ground. Your entire body was screaming for air as well as beginning to heat up. You're starting to get dizzy. You turned on a faucet in the lab, washing your face, while Sebastian finally began approaching you. Hearing him, you pulled your service revolver out of your hip pocket, as your UMP had ran out of ammo dealing with the snails. Shit! you shouted, but Sebastian raised all three of his hands. I'm down, officer. I'm not here to hurt. You narrowed your eyes. You can talk. Sebastian nodded and bowed. Pleased meeting you, madam. Are you mocking me? He grinned. Well, I suppose a little. 
You're right, I twitched angrily, but you remained calm. Hang on. Wait. Why were you angry? You had aced your non-aggression training. Only female recruit of the entire batch who managed to keep her cool. Let me guess. You're feeling emotional? He sneered. And you took a step back. Your heart beating faster. Your thumb twitched. He could see it was about to pull back the revolver's pin to fire. Okay, okay. Uh, calm down. I got it out of my system. Okay? I'm no longer mocking you, madam. He placed his third arm on his chest. See, I've been surviving this place for a long time, and I know exactly how to deal with every creature in the black side, and you... <sighs> You just had a very close encounter with the matchmaking snails of the black side. You tilted your head and thought. I, I'm aware of how to deal with them. Yeah, you most likely got a very redacted document from Urban Shade, didn't you, huh? You gulped. They give us only the necessary information for our survival. The saboteur grinned widely. Hmm, so then. Do you know why they're called matchmaking snails? You shook your head. All I needed to know is how to kill them. <sighs> the matchmaking snails contain a poison. Though after analyzing it's more of a virus they get naturally born with. It attacks your brain, liquefying it in roughly 12 hours. A horrifying thought came to you. Is... is the virus in the... In the vomit, yes. Analysis shows that it's nothing but water, just... You know, the black color comes from just the sheer amount of the little evil things within it. You place the hand on your mouth about to vomit again. Now, you're probably thinking, how will I survive the next couple of hours, huh? You nodded close to tears. Well, remember how I said they're matchmaking snails? You nodded again. Well, that's how you kill the virus. Falling in love? He deadpanned. It's doing it. You know, doing it. It, it. You blushed, heart taking a step back. Out of sheer horror. Hormones released during the, uh... He cleared his throat mockingly. <clears throat> Final few moments of fornication killed the virus almost instantly. Um, though, ironically, the virus also causes uh, heightened sexual desire, so... You could say it might be more of a defense mechanism rather than actual attempt at killing someone. You sunk onto the corner of the lab with a defeated expression. You felt so humiliated. If you told this to anyone at Urban Shade, it could put your career in jeopardy. Not to mention, how are you even supposed to talk about it? And then your attention returned to the creature. A horrifying thought coming to you. I'm sure I know what you're thinking. That's why you're smiling like that. Do you really think I'm this desperate? Ah, uh, come on. I get lonely down here. Uh, plus, I screwed worse. In college. <laughs> Holly was her name. Ugh. What do you mean you fucked worse? He smirked. You got a manly chin and a pixie cut, sweetheart. You puffed up your cheeks, blushing now out of anger. I, I have to have short hair because of the equipment. The monster laughed. I know, I'm just pulling your leg. He crossed his arms. Frowning, you averted your gaze. And after a long silence, 
You finally said. Fine. Hmm? I, I said fine. Your heart was beating faster, and the heat in your body was only increasing. You felt a certain itch that hasn't been this strong since your high school days. The monster chuckled. Can, can, can we at least do it somewhere private without corpses? Oh, of course, madam. You were then guided by the creature through a collection of hallways. But the more you walked, the drier your mouth became. And was your uniform getting tighter? Perhaps it was always so tight. You could feel its roughness. Its shape around your body. The tightness of it around your hip. Your body had become so sensitive. In its entirety. Had become an original zone. It had been no more than an hour since you had been infected. But with how difficult walking alone was by now. It being more of a defense mechanism rather than actually killing tool was beginning to make sense. When you reached the T-shaped hallway, you went down on your knees, breathing heavily, hands between your legs. Uh, Madam, do I seriously have to carry you? You whimpered. I, I, I can move. The monster quickly picked you up. The contact and rough handling was enough to make you release a squeal akin to a mating pig. And by the time the two of you entered the security office, you had began rubbing yourself against him to feel more of him. It just felt so good. The roughness of his scales, the firmness of his muscles. Using his tail, the monster cleared the security desk of its keyboard and monitor. He then slammed you, our heaving body, onto it. Tutting his head, he placed a hand on your cheek, causing your eyes to widen. It felt as if your entire body was electrified by it. In a good way. You babbled something, and the monster vaguely made it out, though he took it as your final verbal consent. Smirking, he began opening the velcro seals and belts of your uniform. Which was made a little more difficult by his large hands. Now oh well. Eventually, he peeled you out of them, like a banana. He watched as your exposed body twitched helplessly against the sudden coolness of the black side but it very obviously seemed to give your body some joy. He chuckled to himself, lapping out his large, heavy tongue. The monster wanted to find out how far he could go with this until you started begging. His tongue made contact with your skin, and you arched against it. Surprised, his eyes whined. You didn't taste natural anymore. Your sweat and skin were sweet, with a slight hint of strawberry. Perhaps the virus made you secrete sugar for your skin to make you more appealing to mates. Your way was delicious, and licking your body became quite exciting to him. You could feel it. Its firmness, rubbing over you, leaving behind his thick salvia. Mm, he was getting excited now. Grinning, the monster slapped his hand on your chest, causing you to scream. Oh, this is going to be fun. He mumbled. The monster made you feel like a sow. Like you had been born just to be bred. Some might call it. He made you feel like a woman. But there was so little actual thinking in your brain 
just sweat, juices and repeated motions. You felt hard, exhausted and sloppy. Your body twitching. But as you lied there with him sitting somewhere in the corner, his glowing eyes focused on you while grinning pleased with himself. You could feel your mental faculties return, slowly but surely. Eventually, you grunted, sitting up, rubbing your hands. You no longer felt like you were set on fire, and while sticky, sweaty and gross, you breathed slowly, feeling normal again. You know, I never heard someone make these noises, madam. <laughs> Not to mention, move so enthusiastically. You shook your head. Ugh. Well, I... I think introductions are in order. You mumbled. Sliding off the table, you saluted. With a blush. After all, you were still unclothed. Officer Gatsby, codename Space Funeral. Member of the MTF Epsilon Zeta-77, aka Golden Retrievers. We are on a rescue mission. The monster raised his brow. We are to locate and escort a certain Sebastian Solis to headquarters. They're certain he's still alive. The biggest shit-eating grin began to appear on the monster's face. Well, 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 Officer Gatsby. From one of his pockets, he pulled out a document. His document. You might be very interested in reading this. Don't worry. There has been nothing expunged on it. You took the paper and as you read it, your expression turned to a horrified visage. I... I... I fucked the extraction target. Oh my god. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts, HuskyHD17, Bella Mare, MysticJade111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye!